In this video, we're going to practice our joins. Hi, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. What I've got on screen are two different views. You can see the code that I have written to create these views. Now, the actual data sets may be different on your computer, but they'll be comparable, I think. So, what I want is a single data set that combines these two together. Now, you may be thinking, okay, that's easy. All I'll do is put the word union between them. And that would be correct, apart from one thing. We have a create date and a modify date, and they are not the same. If I use union, then for instance, we've got a repeated row six, row seven, row nine. That is not going to work, but a very good idea if you thought of that. So the question for you is, you need a join to combine these two together. I need all six rows from here, I need a further two rows from here, and I need five columns. Object ID, name, create date, modify date, schema ID. So if you're experienced with SQL, why not treat this as a practice activity? So you can see the code that I've used in the description to this video. Good luck. Why not pause the video now and have a got it? So let's have a look and see what we can do with these two. So this is the idea that we want, the end result. So object ID, name, and two separate date columns. Now we've got to join them together. Now what sort of join do we want? Well, do we want an inner join? So let's just start drafting this. So select everything from view one, inner join, or that would just be join. Now what are we joining on? Where the object ID is the same. So where object ID, in both views are the same. Unfortunately, that just gives us all of the rows where the object ID is the same. And I want eight rows, that only gave me four. Or could it be a left join? And again, no, this means I get everything from the first view and only those from the second view which match. Same for the right join, except the other way around. So what joins are left? Well, there's the cross join that will give me six rows multiplied by six rows, 36. I only want eight. And there's the full join. And that will give me everything from the first view, everything from the second data set. So let's see what happens when I do a full join. Now we've got eight rows. Excellent. But we've got too many columns. So I could just pick one object ID. The problem with that is we'll have two nodes down here. So I want object ID, name, and schema to not have any nulls, assuming, of course, there are some values in here. And I'm going to do it three different ways. So we've got three different columns. We're going to do it three different ways. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the star, and I'm going to write out the columns. So this will just take me... a few seconds. So we've got schema ID. Then we've got create date and modify date. Now notice that I had to write which view it was from where the same column was used twice. So I had to say view one, view two. I didn't have to do that for create date and modify date because they were only used once. So, so far getting better. So we need to merge these two columns together. So I'm just going to do a bit of tidying up. There we go. So how can we merge these two columns together? So if this thing is not null, then I want it. Otherwise, I want this one. Or if this is null, then I want the second column. So what way can we use for this? Well, let's, for this one, use a case. So case, when this is null, then give me view two, else give me view one. How do I end a case? The word end. And then what? Well, I'd better put an alias because otherwise it would come up as no column name. So let's have a look, see what happens. So now we've just got the one column and it's complete. Now let's use a different way for name. So I'm going to use the coalesce. So what coalesce does 
is it takes the first expression and if it's null, gives me the second. So it's exactly the same as this case. So I will now give it a name. So as name. I put name in hard brackets because you can see that name is in blue and when it's in a different color to what I selected, I want to put it in brackets. So I'm going to do a third way and this way is very similar to the coalesce, is null. Now bear in mind, this is one word. It is not the same as if you were in a where and I would say where object ID is null. That is testing for is null. Whereas this function, this function is saying exactly the same as the coalesce. If this is null, then give me this. Otherwise, give me the first one. So give me the first non-null. And again, I need a column name. So schema ID. So let's run that now. And we have success. But we also have three different ways of doing this. So which is better? Well, the best way, if you've just got two arguments, two things that you're putting in is the is null. The reason for this is because it's a function, what happens is that these two inputs come in, they get calculated once, and then you get the result. Coalesce, however, works in the same way as this. Notice that in here, I had to put this view one in twice. And so if you've got a complex calculation, it calculates it first time to see if it's null, and then calculates a second time if we need it. So it's not as efficient. Now, there are some higher things that you probably won't get into with differences between is null and coalesce. If you're looking at data types, the data type for the is null will be the first data type, this one. However, for the coalesce, it will be whichever has the highest precedence. So you won't come across that too often. There's also the nullability of it. So is null is generally considered a not nullable answer, whilst coalesce is generally considered a null answer. Now, the number of times that I've had to distinguish between those two is very small. So by preference, I would use is null. However, is null can only take two arguments, two answers. Coalesce, on the other hand, can take multiple answers. So if you wanted to put a third thing in here, so if there was a view three, that would be entirely fine because it would just extend the equivalent of this case further. Whereas here, if I put in another value, that will give me an error. Can't do that. No problem with coalesce. It can have three values, four values, five values, as many as you want. So in this video, we've had a look at three different ways for combining two columns and getting non-null values from them. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.